Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows and in today's episode we're going to take a look at the McCulloch strimmer I've got on the bench. Um, the FCO is no good, as I said the cylinder was all, all scored up and was making god awful noise. But I shall be stripping that down for parts a bit later on. We'll look at this, um, this McCulloch next. It's not a very old McCulloch I don't think. It all looks to be complete and in much better condition than the other one. So I've done nothing to it again, literally just uh, got it out of the store and uh, hadn't even checked the fuel lines or anything. So without further ado, let's get down dirty and let's check out this McCulloch strimmer. Right, I've got the petrol out of the FCO because uh, that's US, so we won't be using uh, that strimmer. So I'll have a quick little look into here. Got a bit of rainwater in here. It's got three pipes leading in, and I can see looks like two returns, and I can actually see the um, the main feed in. I just want to try and grab hold of it because it's around a corner. <coughs> just want to make sure that's actually intact. If I can get a hold of it, I have to take that fuel cap out. Try and get a better look at it. If it'll, uh, if it'll come over. Bear with me, this is a bit like a open heart surgery. There it is. Yeah, it's got a filter on the end of it, I can see it. So that's all good, that's all in place. So let's uh Put a bit of go-go juice into there. Let's get a funnel. He's only got small tanks on these. Need to get my own strimmer in at some point because um, that's starting to play up a little tiny bit. Will that all go in there? Yeah, we'll. yeah, I didn't want to start the other day. I got it going, but uh, very boggy. But it has been used quite heavily over this over this season. So that all goes on. That's good. Let's check the air filter out. Oh my lord! Oh. Who did that? Up? Go snap. It's been cross threaded. It's bent. Bent the smithereens, that is. We might be getting a Phillips screwdriver on there, might be better. Got a bit of a Phillips head on it. No. Nope. That does not want to come off. It's coming though. Now what's that all about? I don't know here. Yeah, it's all bent. So it's got a choke mechanism. It's got a full choke, a half choke, and a run, which is good. That, if I can get that out, yeah, that, that was a bit of a straighten up before we continue. Uh, I've got a carburetor. I can hear a funny noise. Oh, she's priming. It is priming to a degree. Just want to check if I can see any return. Coming back. Yeah, I can, and it's chucking back some real cloudy stuff. So this may need a carburetor off, but I'm just gonna try and pump it through. It's got some good good mixed fuel in there, so that'll help it. But it is priming. 
priming very well actually. Um, I want to try and straighten that guard up first. Let it go. Try and give that a bit of a straighten up, best I can. Um, then I'll put that cover back on again and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I straightened it a little tiny bit, but it's not going to have it. It's starting to bend the plastic. I don't want to trash the threads on it, so it's going to have to be what it is. It's a bit better than what it was, but it's not, uh, it's not brilliant. It's gone in better this time. It's more, it's more workable. So that's on. Right, so we've got a turn. Let me bring it back to touch and see what's going on. So you've got a um, on off switch here, uh, stop and run. You've got a choke on halfway and run. I shan't even check the spark plug just yet. I want to see if it can get it to fire. And hopefully it'll do something. Let's have a look. So on, on choke, Let's see what happens. Seems to be a lot of, this is one of these easy, easy um, pull ones. Watch fired them. I heard that fire. I definitely heard it fire. There it goes. Come on, baby. Okay, so we have a runner, but it will not run off choke. Or it runs better on half choke than it does um, on no choke at all. So it'd be a carburetor, I hope. So we'll take this back off. As I say, it was pumping out some some stuff into back into the tank. And I have got a filter on the tank. My lord, am I getting weaker in my old age? Or has someone employed a bloke like He-Man to do this stuff up? Now I would probably say that no one's been in here from day one. It's look, it just looks too much, too neat, too tidy, and what have you. It's looking like it's all as per stock, you know, original, which is good. So we'll take these two bolts off. Two stroke are renowned for mucking about, especially if they're left for a little while. I mean, this is a, you know, it's classified as part of a Husqvarna group, um, but this is certainly the cheaper end of it. So, so two bolts removes the uh, air box cover. That's gone back in. Let's go in there. Come on. Maybe someone has been in here. So what I'm suspecting is uh, the filter to be plugged. All that sort of good stuff. I don't see what come out of there. Let's remove this uh, air box pipe at the back. 
and that should release everything out here. Yeah, it's been uh, that's been worked on inside there as a bolt. Got a bit of lock tight in there or something, which was not on the other bolt. So I think someone's had a little sneaky peek in here. I don't know if threads are stuffed. I don't know yet. I can't get that gasket off the back. Without breaking it, and that's something I don't want to do. There it goes. The threads look pretty good. So it's just got some gunk on there. Hard plastic. I don't know like this. So we've got the box assembly. You then just move the throttle down, pull the cable out, and then you've got a little tiny 10 mil spanner here to undo, just loosen that off, and that throttle linkage will then come off. So it should be a 10, might be smaller, just to prove me wrong. It's saying 11. Let me grab my 11 mil. Right, I've got my 11. Cool, okay. Let's try an eight. Try with the whole lot. That would be a nine now. That's not an eight. Loosen that off and unscrew that. Screw his fingers. That's it. Right. That's a throttle assembly off. And then we've got some pipes here. Now around the car where it goes right, it's green pipe is right over this side, followed by the yellow, which is underneath. So the yellow is nearer the primer for those that have got uh, an interest. Right, let me get a pair of long nose pliers. So I'll try and preserve these pipes if I can. Give a bit of a twist and a wiggle. It's all about twist and wiggling. That's that one. And then the yellow one. Oh, it's well on there too. Just trying to break the seal. I've actually broken the pipe. I think. I'll break the pipe. I think I did. But there's plenty of uh, slack on there. So I'm going to snip that bit off now, like that, and then I can put a new bit on. So there's a the carburetor, as I say, the green pipe goes on this one, and the uh, yellow pipe goes on this one. This is a H629 2C1B00, and it's a uh, 8GK00406 is all the, uh, the markings on it, so that's the information you need if you get a new carb. But I'm hoping this carb will be okay. <clears throat> it's certainly running, just not running very well. So uh, let's get up on the bench, get it apart, see what we can find. Okay, carb rider time. There's a bit of fuel in here. So I'm gonna have a look at this side first to see what's occurring. These are not done up extremely tight, I must add. Shame about the FCO, but you can't save them all, right? And I've got probably put a tray underneath here because I want to see what sort of muck is in this carburetor. Bolts they are. I thought it was under them enough. It's harder to do it with latex gloves on. Okay. 
let's check the bowl the primer to make sure it's not got no holes in it or anything stupid put on something plastic would be better so that's actually not that's actually not uh, not sticking to that so that's telling me that's got a hole in there somewhere which I'm not seeing I might just for argument's sake put a new one on there I've got some new ones that all looks good in there so we've got a gasket assembly that all looks really good really really clean inside that part <clears throat> let's take this bit off of here there's a diaphragm which looks yeah it looks good what's in worse I want to get into here if I can <clears throat> To try and lift this up, try and separate it. It's mainly the diaphragm I want to try and keep if I can. It is lifting, I think. Don't want to tear it. Go the other side. Just try and tease that up. It's stuck in all the places you don't want it to be. It's stuck just about here. Gently, gently does it. It's coming. She's coming. Let's set the diaphragms off. So we've got a screw here to remove. <clears throat> Which would be this little tiny kitty just in here. And there'd be a spring beneath that, so just go a bit careful. Just in there. There's a the spring. That one comes out. And then you've got a little tiny needle just here. That was a bit sticky. Coming out of there. There it goes. That all looks good in there. So that all looks good. All is how it should be. Diaphragm itself yeah it could probably do with a new diaphragm i don't have any spare i need to pick some up the diaphragm is not brilliant but it, it's okay let's have a little look inside here and see what secrets secrets lay within here there shouldn't be anything behind it that concerns me is in the right awkward place where you just where you can't get to them. There it goes. And we don't like coming out at the best of times. And that head's starting to round off so you need to be very careful here. super clean nothing there to worry about right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this through my ultrasonic cleaner um, I think that gas is gonna have to stay on because they, they don't like coming off generally and as soon as it shows its first sign of tearing back off from it God, that's right down there too no I'm gonna leave it be I'm not gonna upset it anymore what it needs to be 
So <clears throat> I'm going to give it a quick little blast with the old WD-40. I don't like using carburetor on these. You've also got a little tiny screen here, which is what I was, I was expecting to find the issue. Which is just there. That comes out. Nothing in there either. This carburetor is really, really clean, which is telling me it's possibly the diaphragm. And at the moment, I don't have a spare. So I'm going to get a good clean just with WD 40, and I'll put it through the ultrasonic cleaner, and then I'll come back and we'll reassemble it. I'll put the diaphragm back in, um, and we'll see how we get on. But there's a few creases on it, that's what's uh, leading me to believe it's that. I mustn't lose a needle either. Put the needle back. That's it. Right, let me get it clean up, and I'll come back. Right, that's gone through the cleaner. It's had WD-40, it's had, it's had the full Monty, so um, that's a lot cleaner than what it was. I'm still suspicious about this diaphragm though, I must admit. That's a bit that's um, causing me a bit of concern. That goes on there. That one goes on there. It's got to go around there first, that's it there, on like that. I put this screw on first because this one, the head is uh, is going on this. I'll try and get it in before it completely goes on me. Doesn't seem to want to sit down in there. Let's put the other screw on. It should be that one there, I think. I'll hold it down into place a bit better. It just stops some of the stresses on it. That's better. That's sat down now. Oh, donut. It's been a donuts. I love donuts. Oh, there's the old dog and bone ringing. I don't know who we got today. Two seconds. Oh, that was Roy the boy. Um, so you can also just uh, wind this out, this screw, and that will give you more um, more play on that screw just there, which I just did. Took it out eight, eight, eight quarter turns and um, put it back in eight quarter turns. So that's that bit done. Hope it's run the right way, he says. Right, moving on, we've got this piece to put in. We should have a reed put on top of it. That goes on there. And that one goes on to there. Somehow. Like that. So happy with that. Next, I've got to fiddle about with um, the spring and the needle assembly. I know these are particularly fiddly. You just take your time with them. That's the best method. And the spring sits on that little tiny um, bit just there. Now what I have noticed about the spring is it's got a very slight bend to it. Very slight bend to it. So I don't know if someone's been in there, but it shouldn't have a bend like that. So I'm just going to try and manipulate that so it's a bit straighter. It's going to be difficult. It's got a very slight bend to it, that's a bit straighter. So that spring sits on there like so. Then we get your needle, sit him in the hole just down in there, he lives in there, and then this little tiny assembly here that sits on top of the spring and through the needle as well. So put it through the needle first and then lift it up so you can get that spring underneath it. Now very careful because you want this spring to shoot off. It's just a bit fiddly. I might have to retract the spring back out. Sit in its, in its little home. And then just push him down. Like so. That's got him. Just double check. Yeah, that's got him. Hold all that down with your finger or thumb. And then you've got a little tiny, tiny, tiny screw, which sits in a little home 
just in there. Give it a bit of a wiggle so it goes into place. This is why I don't particularly like two strokes. It's just that my hands are just not designed for it. And that screw winds down in the air. I don't mind working on two strokes. It's just literally, my hands are just too big. It doesn't seem like it's going down to me. I'm biting now. So that goes down, all the way down, and well seated. And then what you're looking for is for that little needle to lift and raise as it should do like that. Now that spring to me looks compressed and bent. I'm going to move it over a touch. That's better. So that's working as it should. Then you've got your diaphragm to go on top. And that's got two little tiny holes at the bottom. It goes on that way. And you should be able to feel the diaphragm hitting that, that needle, which is what it's doing. So happy with that. We then have this little kitty, which goes on there, like so. And then we have this little kitty and a new primer bulb. That all gets pressed in and that all sits in place and it sits in place like that it doesn't want to sit down very tight it doesn't go that way it goes that way I know it do but I don't, don't want to sit in place I might just put a little tiny bit of WD-40 on that just to lubricate it because it's not sitting down as well as I would like it might go down once the screws are in place. Let's put two of them down first. Just to sort of hold it. Not tight, just I'm just, just putting them down. And then that one in. Oh, hello. Oh, I've forgotten again. I always forget the filter. That's all got to come apart. <laughs> always forget it. A little tiny screen. I forgot it on my last car, last car I've done. Losing my touch. That's why I put all my bits in a tray. So if you do forget it, ideally you want your tray to be empty when you uh, when you finish. And the screen goes in there. Very, very gently, just start to push it in home. And you want it to be nice and snug all the way down. I'll just pass that little bit there. That's it. You can get another little bolt if you like just to make sure it's down. You don't want that popping back up. So let's now reassemble again. Don't know why that doesn't want to sit down on top of that. It will go though, I'm sure it will. Because it's no different size to the other one. There's a bit more of a lip on there. That's a problem you use non genuine parts, I suppose. Oh, no more bits in the tray, so we're on a winner there.
screw that one down and come over this far side. Screw that one down. Yeah, it's going down now. And then this one here. Screw that one down, turn it around. Last one. Now I didn't find anything wrong in the carburetor, which tells me it's possibly the diaphragm. I need to get in the habit of buying about 15 or 20 diaphragms. They all are pretty much generic. That goes down. So that's all now flush. Let's make that lovely little noise that we like to hear. And now we can go back to the uh, back to the uh, machine, try and fit it on, and see if we haven't improved it any. All right, back on the machine. I need to pull this little tiny yellow pipe through just a smidge, not a lot, just a smidge, because I took some off, didn't I? And it goes round that way, and we want oh, that way, sorry, and we want the yellow pipe to go on the big one. And the green pipe to go on a little one. We then want the throttle assembly to go on. And this can be adjusted later. But it was about there. Give or take. That link wheel. Just nick that up. And then push your throttle linkage down like so. Get hold of it. Push your cable in and then let it go. And we do your throttle. That all moves. That's cool. We've got a gasket to go on, and that gasket should go on anyway. It's a uh, universal. But it's going to go on like so. We've then got the air box to fit on as well. So the bolts go through the air box. So before I do that, I want to just clean this, this up. It's got some stuff on there. I'm not convinced it belongs there. So I get my pick and pick away at that. I'm not quite sure what that is on there. It certainly doesn't belong on there. But the threads may be gone on this hole on the inside. Uh, so there's that way around. That went in. That went in. Gasket on top. Or that one. Another bolt goes in there, through there, through there, that goes into there, air breather pipe back on, clip back on, that's all locked in. And we'll start to do this one up first. This is the one that wasn't a problem. And then this one. I don't think this one is a problem, but it had a lot of gunk on it. So don't go too mad. Let's see if it bites down. Yeah, it's biting. I don't go too mad now. No, it's gone. Okay. And then that one. Right, happy with all of that. Let's see if we've got a priming carburetor. There it goes. So she's priming, which is good. So we're no worse off than what we were beforehand. However, I still believe the diaphragm is going to be an issue. And if it is, I have to order some up when we come back to it. But we shall see. Uh, Air breather box on. I'm going to slightly 
not quite so bent bolt on it. That's good. I'll remove the spark plug. It's got a uh, spark plug in there which I'm not familiar with. Let's have a look see what that is. It's a Torx. Now lots of people rate these. I don't personally. I don't like them at all. But it's gummed up and mucky so I'll give it a bit of a clean that'll help and that's the spark plug now all cleaned up and going it's been there for a while I dare say this is original they do supply these with originals uh, on the machines I don't particularly like them but uh, I've had a lot of bad experience with them but some people ha absolutely adore them because they're, they're cheap as well but uh, not me oh that's in all right, uh, tool tidy up time. We'll have a quick tidy up, put some tools away, and we'll see um, how this works. I've got a suspicion it's not going to run as well because um, of a diaphragm. But uh, here's fingers crossed, here's hoping. So I'll have a quick tidy up and I'll come back. All right, here we go then. Let's have a little look, see what we're doing. That's no good. <clears throat> so, priming carburetor. That we all know. Choke on. Turn it on. Let's see what we get this time. Choke off. Chair back a bit. That might be some new cords. You get so much before you even get a, a compression. A bit more priming. More choke. Worse than it was before. Like well, that makes any sense. Yeah, we're getting fuel through. running cool <clears throat> let's just try and start it off a choke again now there you go so it runs quite impressed with that because um i didn't know what was wrong with it it might have been something really really silly inside the um inside the carburetor or maybe that little tiny spring it was ever so slightly bent maybe that wasn't enough just to push that diaphragm down could have been but uh that runs it's a bit of a pickle to start to be fair but uh when i put my hand over here i think what i've done i knocked it off as well which didn't help so but that's not on choke as you can see it's turned on 
Super, super happy. Okie doke, so there is the McCulloch trimmer now all up and running. It certainly wasn't running beforehand, it was only running on half choke. Um, could have been the primer bolt, actually. Could have been. I have kept it. Let me just locate it for you. I have kept it. It's one of these two. It's hard to tell which one it was now. It was, yeah, it was this one. And I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a hole in it anywhere. But you should be able to put on a bit of plastic, and it's, it's not even gripping it at all. So that tells me it's got an absolute minute little hole in there somewhere, and it will be tiny. But I'm not even picking that out, which is weird. I can't see a hole or a fracture. But uh, anyway. I'll keep it, you never know, it, it, it's not doing what it should be doing, but either way, the McCulloch Strimmer is now up and running, so that is, uh, what do we get, we've got the Kawasaki running, we've got the um, generator running, we've got the McCulloch Hedge Cutter running, the FCO is not running, that's terminal, uh, the partner trimmer is terminal until I can get another card for it, and I, I just don't think uh, it's going to be feasible um to get to get it to, to, to work as i want it because the carburetor is too expensive so that's a shame so next i've got to do a power force strimmer or i've got a home light mighty chainsaw um the chainsaw i think i have actually had running already but i think there's a problem with the brake i think the uh power force i've not had running not even tried it so it could be um it could be a runner it could be no good no idea but all in all for what i paid for the machines already um i should get a good return probably next season now but uh what i should end up doing with all of these machines that i'm, I'm running uh i shall winterize them um drain all the fuel out get them running prime the bulbs prime the bulbs until all the fuel comes out of them and then stack them away ready for next year um, i might even cut my own hedge actually this weekend uh with the kawasaki that's uh, really is uh, running really well and cuts nice too so anyway that's that so thank you very much for joining me in this episode of mixed mows hope you enjoyed it hope you found it informative if you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. That helps towards the growth of my channel. Also, if this is your first time in viewing mixed mowers, don't forget to press your red button and give the old bell a nice good whack. And that will tell you when I'm releasing another video. So until next time, don't forget people, take it easy.